what is people's problem with autism? Why is it so difficult walking that initial journey as a person with autism? Well, uh, I think one problem is just in the fact that we use words. You know, when we get into to semiotics and we get into the um, the way that people feel about words, get into the semantics of words, and it's mm. um, when a, a person has autism, there's a reason that they call it a spectrum. You know, you, you can have a, um, a uh, what like up to a 60% comorbidity with ADHD. So that's one flavor. You know, some autistic people have a, a really big, you know, tough challenge with sensory processing disorder. I did especially with synesthesia. Then you have other people who have a cognitive impairments, intellectual impairments, other comorbid conditions. The the spectrum of challenges, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to say right now that, I, you know, I have low support needs as, as an autistic adult, but that wasn't always the case. And when you just tell a person that you're autistic, um, what you've really done at that point is just encourage them to use whatever they know about autism and then to put that on you as an effigy. And that doesn't really help people know who you are or how to treat you. And so mm. the problem with labels, you know, when, when it comes to diagnostic criteria or getting someone on an insurance plan or, or something like that, th there, there are uses to labels. But at the same time, um, it, it also kind of lets you cop out of that whole process of self-advocating and talking about what it is that's different about you as an individual. And I I think that, so the first problem is in using labels to identify it, because when you do that, you've really done yourself and the other person a disservice. But another problem is, is that unless someone has someone who's actually autistic in their lives, they don't know what it looks like. You know, um, and it's so funny to me after, you know, having to just struggle and fail and all of that for 25 years, um, to have people come up to me and, and say things like, you're not autistic. <laughs> and at the same time, it's like, okay, well, I mean, I put a whole bunch of work in, you know, if you'd have known me 10 years ago, I was literally looking, looking down at the ground while I was talking with no facial expressions and, and in monotone. Sure. But <laughs> in a way, when a, when a disability is invisible to the naked eye, people treat you differently. There's a, there's a tendency in the human brain, especially as people know you for longer, like family members, friends, where your symptoms will be treated as character traits. You know, because if you had a friend that was in a wheelchair, let's say, you wouldn't think less of them for not offering to help you move. But if you're, you have a friend with ADHD and they forget your birthday or they're, they're sparked by something that you say and they change the top and it sounds like they're talking about themselves, there is a tendency to socially judge those behaviors in the context of if a person was neurotypical. And by not positively advocating, by not self-advocating and talking about that. And it doesn't open up a discussion. You know, I don't know if you've ever been around a person with physical disfigurements, but the social reaction is either once the intimacy barrier is crossed to start asking a whole bunch of questions to be able to figure out how to treat that person. But every person who doesn't do that when that person doesn't self-advocate is either going to stare at you or revert their gaze. And that's kind of what happens with neurodivergence too. And there's a, a lack of understanding there. And it, it makes all kinds of different situations frustrating because when you process the world differently, people assume that your reactions are for completely different reasons because they assume it as if it was them. That's the, the classic human mistake is to project ourselves onto others.